Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teaches. I'm Tash and in today's video I'd like to talk about minimums and maximums used in combination with automation as a means to take little eight bar loops and make them into fully fledged automated arrangements. So without further ado, let's jump right in and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now what I really want this video to be about is how we can get outside of our, of our minds and the prisons of four bar loops. When you're working on something and uh, you know, especially in Bitwig when you've got the possibility for all these fantastic bits of modulation and automation, it can be very easy to actually forget that you're not arranging a song, you're just listening to a loop live that really serves no purpose outside of Bitwig. In order for it to become a song, you need to arrange it and you need to have automation and modulation. You need to remove bits here and add bits in there. But oftentimes it can be quite difficult to actually get to that stage with the wealth of possibilities at your disposal with Bitwig. So today's video is sort of going to be looking more at um, the, the organizational side of the creativity, if that makes sense. So um, applying structure to the madness. And what I'd really like to look at is a concept that I, I usually teach as minimums and maximums. And uh, I think one of the, the hardest things to wrap your head around with automation is that if you could automate anything from any minimum value to any maximum value, like how do you know what to automate? People are always saying, oh, well, you've got to add automation to keep the track interesting and to keep fresh and stuff. But like, what do you automate? Well, oftentimes you're going to automate the, the filters. Filters are a great thing to automate. Oftentimes you'll automate the dry wet on effects. That's another great thing. Uh, and the importance of automating, say, the filters and the dry wet are just to distinguish different moments in the song. You know, some moments are darker, whereas some moments have more high end. Some moments are drier, whereas some moments feel like you're in a cathedral. And all of that is way more powerful when it's not always like that. You go from a small value to a high value back down. And that is the joy of automation. But what do we automate then? And do we just put an automation on here and wiggle the filter? That's what we're gonna have a look at now. So first of all, I'm just gonna mute the, the music I've got here. And I've just got now the bass and the drums playing together. So this is the bass patch that I've created. It's nice and low and driving and plucky. But what am I gonna automate? If I'm playing this, obviously if I open this up, it starts to sound cooler. And I can go all the way down. But you will notice that there are certain points here where it feels like there's no point going any lower because it no longer sounds good. Just the same as when we go up here, it's no longer adding anything more. So what I like to do is to find the sweet spot of automation for that knob and then set up a remote control that will only go within that value. What I mean by this is let's find the lowest possible value for that bass. Okay, I'm, I'm happy with that, that sounds nice. But now instead of using this knob, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a macro modulator and I'm gonna leave this at the bottom for now, but then I'm gonna automate this. In fact, no, I'm not, sorry. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this to max, first of all. So we've got our, uh, our, our parameter at our minimum value, 77. And because I've put this up to full, if I now modulate this, it's going to show me the modulated value. So I'll be able to see what is the highest I want it to go. Still good. Doesn't really feel like there's much need going up that high for me. I think we could realistically go to about there, and I'm happy with that. And as now we remove that uh, modulator handle, we now have a knob that uses the full range from zero to 100%, but doesn't go any higher or lower than we want it to. I'm gonna bring this down a tiny bit more. Cool, so now that we've got that cutoff knob, why don't we map uh, map that to one of these remote controls. So now in theory, if we wanted to, we could close everything up and we could keep everything just wonderfully tight. I could even put those guys in there, but we could then have just very simple control over the, the cutoff of that synth within the range that we want. But the cool thing about using these macros is it doesn't stop there. We don't just have to modulate one parameter with it. As this filter is opening up, I like them being quite short notes here, but as it starts to open up, it feels like the notes are still a little bit too short. 
So I'd like them to sort of go bah, 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 instead of like bah, bah, bah. So with the same modulator, I'm just going to start playing around with some of these other values. And bearing in mind, because I've got this set to full, what we're going to hear in real time is this knob up full, which is just a great way of working. Let's start to increase the decay of the, of the filter envelope. Maybe a bit of release. A bit here as well in the amp. Maybe a bit of uh, resonance. Maybe a bit of shape. A bit more of the, the EG. Cool. So now as we pull out of that and we pull back on this, we have a knob that goes from minimum, just plucky bass, which is a great intro, and we get it to go all the way up to... which I think sounds quite cool. Why don't we set up another macro now? Because I think what's cool is having two or three different sound shapers or sound changers that we can then automate over the, the length of the track. So why don't we also create some sort of effect-based thing here? So I think I've actually got... I've got a delay here, doing a little bit of delay, but I want uh, another macro that I've, in fact, put the, the, the delay inside the effects box so that I can use the, auto, the, the modulation here to, to change that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing of setting this to max. And I'll bring this down to somewhere like there so I can hear it a bit better. And I'm just going to use this knob to bring up the mix of this delay. Obviously, that's too much. That sounds quite cool. Why don't we also take, uh, let's group that, and then let's add a reverb. Um, I think that could sound quite cool. Just adding a little bit of, where is the bloody reverb? Oh, I'm under presets, that's why. Oh, what have I done? Reverb, nice. Uh, and then for this, I think what I'll do is I'll just keep the mix to full and I'll bring the volume all the way down on that. And then just with this mix, we'll bring the volume up a bit. Um, probably a good idea to get rid of some of that low end in the bass reverb. Ooh, I accidentally did that with the reverb. Ooh, I don't know what I've done there by accident, but that sounds really cool. Why don't I do um, some sort of automation with that as well? Let's use this to control the... So that accident has ended up being really cool. Okay, so let's now add this and we can call this one uh, effects. This is our cutoff and let's do one more. Now what should this do? I think it would be quite cool to do something that changes the actual uh, character of the sound rather than just the, the cutoff and stuff. So let's take one more macro here and we'll do the same old thing. I'll put this to max, and we just want to basically change the texture of the sound quite radically. So maybe let's try removing... That's quite cool. So we've I've gone the opposite way and made it really short with this knob. Let's add a bit of noise as well. Cool, so we've got another knob there now. And we'll call this um Based treble.
cool. And let's do one more knob. And this one will just basically make everything really long. In fact, I really like that effects knob, but I don't want that to be, um, I want another knob to be able to do that crazy thing. So let's take whatever, where was the EQ? Let's in fact just use this one, let's just call that uh, Rezo, and we'll make a new one called uh, Effects. And let's make this one so it doesn't control the mix. What do we got there? Let's do this one to control the mix. Cool, and then I think we can probably Rezo stop that. Okay, nice. So let's now see what we've got here because we've got our effects now as well. Okay, very cool. So we've now got our first sound all mapped out. So if I break this all the way back down to the bottom, this is our sound. And what's cool is I can now hide everything away. And just for the sake of keeping it all nice and tidy, I'm just gonna put that at the end of the effects chain. And I'll put this in the note effects section. And now what I'm just, I'm just gonna hide it because I think now we don't need to see any more than that. And this is where it starts to get really exciting. But first of all, let's just, let's just take one of these other sounds, for example. So let's go down here to the ARP and let's see what we've got. What can we map? So let's take a macro. And first of all, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get it to sound as I would want at its minimum. Got a couple of things working on stuff here that I don't want to have happen. Ever. Okay, cool. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, as I said, just try and get it to sound as I would want it to at its minimum value. That to me is okay. We've got our macro here. I'm going to put that to full, and let's start now. First of all, doing something with the filter. Let's make let's make it sound massive. So we've got our first knob there. Let's see what this like. I'm gonna put these back to let's call this uh, cutoff. Nice. Let's make another knob. Let's do something with some effects again. So let's create in here. Let's just put a Let's put a delay, we'll do a three and a four, that's okay by me. So we'll take our knob, put it to full. And again, let's see what it's set. Oh, are we in there? Yeah. Quite cool. Add a bit of detune. What else can we do? Maybe we could add some flange to this. See, this will only happen when the delay is on, so. So let's call this one uh, effects. I'm 
bring the bass back in. Okay, cool. So let's do a couple more. Uh, I'm just going to stop this uh, flanger because that's quite irritating, actually. It'd be quite cool to put an LFO or something random. Um, now let's do an LFO. Let's do quite a slow one on this resonance because that's sounding really cool. Okay, let's go back to our synth. What else can we add? It'd be quite good to do one that makes it more plucky. So without actually opening the filter, let's take a macro here and we'll, from the default sound, let's make it pluckier. one as well. Let's add that. I'll call that beeper because it makes it beepier. Let's make that effects do something else as well. Let's add some reverb in there in the same way we did before. So let's take a reverb, put that to full mix and let's use, where was the effects one? I think it was that. And let's bring that all the way down. And pop this up. Hmm. There we go. Nice. Okay, and then let's do one more knob. So what should this one be? Let's... Uh... Let's take, uh, and it was quite nice as well, is sort of just starting from zero, putting all the knobs back to zero, because what's quite exciting is when you get those combinations afterwards. But I like to just start back to zero, put this to max, and let's just see how we can change the sound. So maybe it might be cool to do one that's like a bit distorted. long and distorted but also got a high pass. Oh, oh this is a cool moment as well. So sometimes I've, I've this knob is, is obviously making everything a lot louder and we don't really want that but what's quite cool as well is you can do all of these automations but just automate the volume down too. So now as you the volume will change correctly in order to keep it at the same level.
that guy on as well. Ooh. And we'll call that uh, Ruiner. Okay, nice. So we now, we've just got one more sound. So let's just see what we've got here. That would be nice if it just sort of opened up, I think. So let's take our macro. Let's add uh, a delay after this as well. And we can use that same cutoff knob just to bring up the mix a bit. Fantastic. I mean, that right there is just the, the epitome of just a very nice, simple automation that's changed everything. Um, and let's do one more on here. Let's do something that makes it uh, maybe open the filter. Uh, oh, sorry, bring up the, the low pass. Um, so why don't we take uh, this, we'll map that all the way up there. Call this a uh, smaller, and we'll use that one to just make everything a bit smaller. Okay, so now this leads me on to the perfect point here, and this is where uh, the the whole point of this minimum maximum and setting it up beforehand makes arranging a song just so terribly easy. If I close everything up now, so let's just make it so that literally everything looks so nice and tidy. Let's close that up. Let's put this in the note effect box. We'll close that up. Wonderful, let's go to the ARP. Uh, what do we got here? Got a few things to shove in the note effects box. Mm, yeah, move, move, move. And in theory, you can just close this up. Oh, I just gotta put those in here. Actually, that's gotta go to there. Nice, so we got that closed up, we got our ARP. Let's bring these all the ways down. And we got our bass. Let's bring these all the way down. And we got our drums. Okay, cool. So if we listen, this is our minimum. We could probably go a little bit lower than that by removing something. So we could just have, say, the bass in this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this out so that every section we're dealing in is 16 bars long. So let's just uh, command J these so we're talking about a 16 bar clip. And I'm just going to duplicate this ground so we've got like eight of them. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's see how long this is as a track. So we'll go show real time ruler. We could probably do two more. Let's make it 10. So first of all, I'm also just going to draw in some points here to just say where things are. So I'll say at bar 32, we want this to be a drop. Um, maybe at bar 64, we want this to now be a breakdown and we want this to be a pretty epic breakdown that probably lasts until there. So let's call that drop. And maybe these last two could be an outro. That seems to make sense. And then of course, these first two will be an intro as well. So let's call that intro. And one thing I also like to do is to put a point at the end that just says, and it just, it just helps. And straight away, because I know this is a breakdown, I'm gonna remove these two kicks. And I'm also going to remove the low tom and straight away that would just give us a slightly nicer understanding of what's happening where. Okay, so I'm also going to remove the ARP and have that sort of coming in from bar 16. So let's have a quick listen here. Obviously the drums as well, I probably don't need to do all of these happening at the same time. So let's just get rid of a couple of these things. What's that hat? We'll get rid of that until there. We'll get rid of, or we'll fade that in and we'll get rid of that. Okay, nice. So 
Before we get started on here, one thing I want to point your attention to is that when you click something to automate it, um, you know, you, you can see there's the line here and I can now automate that over time. And you can see that the value corresponds with it. Um, but when you click on different ones, the, the name will change here. Whichever one you're automating will change depending on which one you click. But there's a nicer way of working and that is, I think once you've got all your minimums and maximums and everything is all ready and you've got it set to go, is put everything at its base minimum and then click on each one. So I've got my cutoff here and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the little plus and the plus will just commit that to its own lane. So we've got our cutoff now with a knob here so we can just directly access it. Next up, we've got the resonance knob. So I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna press plus. Check that out, I'll drag that down. Really, you should do it in opposite order if you want them to be in the right order. Then we've got this base to treble knob, so I'm going to press that one as well. Let's bring this down below again. We'll do the longer knob. Oh, and then we've got this effects knob. So let's add that one. And uh, in fact, let's call this effects one because I think I might want to make a different effects for it later. And in order to find that effects, I have to call it here. Um, okay, very cool. So now what we can do is we can close that up. And in fact, we don't even need to have this open anymore because now we have... We can have absolute control over it here. And of course, we can then just draw the points in and automate the individual sections over time. And what's best is we can see them all at the same time. So if you've ever had any issues sort of keeping track of where your automation is in your head, well, this is the way to go. This is it. Uh, so let's just do that with the other two synths as well. So we'll go to the light pluck. This one's only got two. So let's click and plus, click and plus. So let's put that, that, that. And the last one is our ARP. This one's got four sounds, so let's do it backwards just so we don't have to change the order. Nice and nice. And I think I'd actually rather change the, the names on here just so they were correct. So cut off. This is our effects. This is our beeper. And this is our ruiner. Okay, cool. So now what we can do is just close this up and let's also close up the side view because we don't even need that anymore. And let's just automate. Let's just do a little bit of automation here. So we could probably start with this about there. So we're sort of having a, a slightly lower base. And I'm going to bring that all the way down to full zero by the time it gets to the drop. So we want like a nice low end by about there. Uh, also, over the breakdown, it might be quite cool if we like bring that back up to being sort of more trebly. Uh, maybe for the outro as well, we could do that. Um, I don't know how high that gets. Okay, lovely. Uh, why don't we also take now the cutoff, and that might be quite cool to start from about here, bringing up to... Let's just keep it bringing up, just to see what's happening there. And then we'll have the that open up here, maybe drop down a bit again. We'll open that massively by the end of the outro. And of course, we can change all of these things afterwards, but it's just a point of getting like a, a concept down, really. Uh, what else have we got? This resonance. That might be a really cool thing to play with. Uh, remember, it's bipolar uh, automation, so I don't want to go any higher than about 0.5. Let's start playing with that like here, and then maybe we can even keep that for the drop. Um, and then we'll have that come out towards the end as well. So that's all four of those automation bits done. We've got this effects bit. Now that might be quite a good idea to start bringing in straight away. So let's just see what happens if we do something like this. And of course these sharp cuts probably won't sound great per se, uh, but we can fix that afterwards. So we've now done our basic arrangement of that. And what's nice as well is just working fast, you know, just working like you have a purpose and you know what's up. It might be quite cool to start bringing this in here again, actually. And 
And of course we've got this synth here. Might be a good idea to start bringing that cut off up. Bass probably to come down and be quite low there. So uh, what one did we have? Oh, it's the longer. Note. Oh, it's the cutoff we've got over. Here. bring this uh, beeper down probably and then let's also bring the cutoff down on this guy and let's make it get smaller as we get to <laughs> Anyways, you can see how easy it is. Let me just bring that back down to see if we get the bass. How easy it is to very quickly set up all of these little modulations and then being able to see them all is just a proper game changer. And um, yeah, I hope this has been helpful and get your minimums and maximums, get them all ready and then just think big, do big brush strokes, just these small little bits of automation like here, for example. It could be quite cool just at the end of the bar to have this cutoff just open up a bit. So let's see what that sounds like. With the effects as well, that could come up. If we remove then the kick there, let's take that last bit out. And then maybe that little bit could filter up as well. And what's lovely about having all of these automation pieces just ready to go is that you can just see what you're doing. So let's bring the cutoff uh, there suddenly up a bit. Anyways, yeah, you get the point, and I hope this has been helpful. I shall see you in the next video. Well, folks, that's sadly all we have time for today, but I do hope that this video has been useful. If you enjoyed it, then please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and smash that notifications button if you'd like to keep up to date with my future videos too. In the meantime, happy Wednesday, and happy creating.